like 40, migrating thousands of people every few months, we're going to go on a little journey. The first part of our research is figuring out what people are interested in. What do they care about? What are they going to read about and what they're looking for? So Google Trends is a great place to get started. Hopefully, you have a good sense of like what kind of topics you would like to be writing about or what you know, your website ultimately is about. So you can start plugging in keywords there. You can compare traffic uh, to competitive terms, uh, its growth over time, you know, where people are searching from. If we're looking at different geographies, this is super helpful. You can also see relevant and related topics. So consider other words that you, and areas that you may not have thought of exploring just yet. Next, Google Analytics. If you do not have Google Analytics on your website, please go get that now and then come back to this video. Google Analytics will give you the insight into what people are actually reading and engaging with on your website. You'll be able to see what the top pages are and how often people are visiting. This will be a good sense to understand what they might care about more of, what information they might require, and maybe more uh, content around these certain topics. Another tool I like to use is SparkToro. This gives us an insight into what people are sharing and talking about on Twitter. If you have a Twitter account, you can plug it in and get a good sense of um, what your network is actually caring about. This would be a great barometer for figuring out like where you should be uh, thinking about your content. Next, what language are people using? Now this might be English and French, but not always. This could be British English and American English. You know, they're very different and the nuances can be quite subtle. But also like, what words do people use? Social listening is a great tool for this. Understanding, you know, what people are talking about, what they're sharing on social media, how they're describing it. You can also look at like, how much content gets shared based on this stuff. You know, you can also see what relevant hashtags exist. This is a great way for you to mine data and get an understanding of like what your target audience is really interested in. Another area is look for synonyms. Now, I went to thesaurus.com and pulled up content, but thesaurus saw that as happy, content. So be mindful of the fact that Although a word is spelled one way, it might be pronounced another way and could have a completely different meaning than you intended. So be mindful of this. You could be writing about content, but people are reading content and it might not make sense. So be extremely careful when you're choosing your words. Then. The next stop is looking at what your competitors are writing about. Sure, you might be late to the game or feeling like you're late to the game, but understanding like what your competitors are writing about will give you a good sense of you know, what your potential audience and target customers are interested in. We use a tool called Ahrefs. It gives you a great insight into what your competitors are writing about, but also what keywords you might not be ranking for. This will give you a good barometer of like where you stack up in relation to the rest of your competitors, but it also might highlight some opportunities that you didn't realize, such as competitors that you didn't know existed. You can also check out you know, how they rank for certain keywords. You can see your gaps where you don't rank at all in the top 10 for a certain phrase. This might be a good indication that you should be creating some content in that space. The last part, go to your competitor's website and actually look at what they're doing. Tools are great, tools are amazing, but you need to go and do the legwork and actually look at what they're doing. Airbnb does a fantastic job with their host uh, content section. They have tons of pertinent information, it's broken down in a nice digestible way, and you can see like, how they put some thought into the types of content or how certain content pieces should be presented for their users. Whether it's a video or an article, they break it down in a way that's thoughtful and you know, focused on their readers. All right, the 
The fourth stop on our journey is actually looking at what Google is showing in the search results. Now, Google has a tremendous amount of data based on billions and billions and billions of searches that gives us insight into what we should be focusing on. So first place to start is when you start typing into Google, looking at the dropdown of recommended searches. These are all other searches related to those keywords that people are using to find content and find information. So this can be a great jumping off point for understanding what we should be writing about. And next, scroll to the bottom and see what those related searches are. But you'll also see that there's types of content and other additional pieces that might be relevant to your topics and to your field. So have a good sense of like what you might want to consider. Content strategy can encompass a lot of things, infographics, videos, webinars, case studies. Content is a big space. And so having a good understanding and no matter what industry you're in, there's going to be opportunities for you to like piggyback off this information that Google shares. Now, my favorite piece of this is the people also ask section. Now, this will come up for a lot of um, informational type keywords, but you can click on any one of these answers and it'll expand it. And you'll see that more drop down underneath it. And you can do this until your fingers get sore. And then you can scrape all this data and have the questions and the ideal answers to those questions right there for you to replicate. Now this works really well in figuring out how people are searching and what those questions can actually look like. Lastly, we want to look at the types of featured snippets uh, found in the search results. Now, these are the little answer boxes at the top of the Google result for you know, the five W type questions. So in this case, what is content marketing? We see we get a nice, beautiful paragraph answer be perfect on an essay. And then for how to create content, you get 10 steps for creating a marketing plan. Now, if you're creating content for these two topics, you want to try and match your content to this answer box. If you see that there's like a listed answer, you better make your content a listed type article. If you have a paragraph, you're going to want to have something that is a little more thoughtful and long form in terms of like how you present that content. Matching these answers will give your content a much better opportunity for ranking, but also will give you a good sense of like how people are engaging or wanting an answer to these questions. So be really thoughtful and strategic when you see these answer boxes, make sure your content ma matches that style. All right, now I hope by now you've clued in that you should probably have a spreadsheet or a Word doc for all of this great data that you're collecting. We're gonna look at how to compile and audit this data. So we wanna dissect and understand what these keywords are looking for. If you're using a tool like Ahrefs, you can find out the keyword difficulty, how many people are searching for it. If you're geo-specific content or Thinking more regionally, you can see that regional search volume. This will also give you a good idea of like what other topics you could write about. And if there's a localized um, impact versus a more global one, you can think about that for your content strategy too. But figure out like how competitive those keywords are. How realistic is it? Is it for you to rank? But also like, are people actually searching for this topic? The other thing we want to do is look at the search result features that are available in there. If you see a lot of search results with videos in them, you're probably going to want to have video content to go with your written content. It's going to be really hard for you to show up in those video boxes if you don't have a video. If you see something with a lot of images, again, infographics be super helpful there. If you're seeing a lot of local search results, or any other kind of uh, 
additional features that don't really pertain to the content, you might want to reconsider this topic. If you see the, like, the Amazons, the Wikipedias, the Apples, you know, big news outlets ranking at the top of those results, you might want to reconsider because your website probably won't outrank them um, as easily as you think. And lastly, have a look at how competitive these keywords are. You know, be real honest with yourselves too about how likely it is that your website is going to rank for these terms. You know, Google looks for big, um, trustworthy, reputable websites to showcase at the top of their results when it comes to content. But if you're looking at, yeah, something with a smaller search volume, a little less competitive, you'll have an opportunity to, to rank for that term and get a foothold within the search results and build momentum from there. But if you see something that is super hard and your brand new website, you're gonna have a very hard time ranking number one for that topic. The last part of our journey is determining your priorities. So have a spreadsheet. It doesn't need to look as nice and organized as this, but have something that you can go and filter and look through the content with. You want to be able to like organize like what topics you might be looking at, um, how difficult it is going to be, what kind of resources you might want to have, and have an honest conversation with yourself about how that content is going to look at the end of the day, what, um, what resources you can commit to making sure that it's a great piece of content because ultimately producing content that is not great is gonna serve you worse than putting out you know, something over time. So put real dedicated thought into what topics you can actually help answer and provide value to your readers. Some places to get started, think about time-sensitive content. Um, you know, if you're post-secondary education, September is coming around, kids are going back to school. Think about the content around that. Early wins, I'm thinking about like PDF or sales collateral or any printed stuff that you might already have. Take that information and put it on your website. Repurpose it into a more fun or thoughtful piece of blog content and use that stuff. If your sales team has um, lots of feedback questions or uh, FAQs, repurpose that content, put it on your website, make it a blog post. Low hanging fruit, same thing. Like if you have existing content pieces out there, just like get it up on the website, repurpose it, reuse it. And lastly, think of something that is fun and exciting because if you've ever done any tedious work, it takes three times longer than if you enjoy doing the work. So, if you have something that your team can get on board with and is excited about writing about, you're gonna get better results because you can feel and see that within their writing and work. 